What's good YouTube, it's your boy TSO Sage and I'm back with another video. Now I'm not gonna lie y'all, I'm recording because I have to. In the grand scheme of things, I'm pissed right now. I really shouldn't be making this video. But then there's a really good argument that I should record because I'm upset right now. So here's just a quick disclaimer because I know how I am when I'm upset. I recognize all the players who are honorable mentions and of course the people who are actually on the list as being really good at their position. But I don't know who because I don't script anything, but when I get to that player that kinda pisses me off in some way, shape, or form, I just wanna remind you guys, I don't think he's complete trash. I'm just toxic bro but without further ado these are gonna be your top 10 shooting guards in the nba oh and one more thing before this video gets started positions in basketball are pretty much subjective at this point it's really just off ball guards and wings a ball handler and a big man so if a really really good player doesn't get on the list nor get an honorable mention it's a good chance i just don't call him a shooting guard but it really doesn't fucking matter but y'all probably gonna bitch in the comments anyway without further ado here's your top 10 shooting guards coming in at number 10 we have cj mccullum now for some people this is gonna be way too low and for some people this is gonna be way too high high as CJ McCollum could easily be off the list altogether. But although there's definitely a few people who overrate CJ's offense, it's just way too many people that underrate his offense. In terms of shot creation alone, CJ McCollum is actually one of the better players on this list altogether. Even though he's 6'2", it's a matter to CJ McCollum's underrated ball handling ability lets him pretty much do anything he wants on the court that doesn't require him yamming on somebody. He's without a doubt one of the better mid-range shooters on this list. And people talk about Dame time all the time in terms of being clutch, but CJ McCollum's been right there with him. Sure, he's not quite your illustrious two-way player or anything, and even though he's a good scorer, he's not quite good enough into which you just want to run the entire offense through him. But to make it elementary for you guys, bro got a bag. And if he was a bit taller or he played some damn defense, he'd be much higher on the list. In fact, Dane might be a champion by now. Unfortunately, neither are the case. However, CJ does barely make the top 10. Next up at our number nine spot on the list is going to be Zach Levine. First of all, if there's anything the Bulls have done good this entire decade, it's getting Zach Levine on that contract. Honestly speaking, that is one of the best contracts in the league today. And I say this because although Zach Levine isn't as skilled as most of the people on this list, hell, he's not more skilled than CJ McCollum. But his offensive output is certainly effective. Like, this dude is not only one of the more athletic players in the league, he's also one of the better shooters in the league. Which, by the way, I'm not giving him good boy points for this, but I do have to commend him on the fact that he actually honed his talent. Like, Zach Levine really went from a Gerald Green-ass nigga to one of the best shooting guards in the league. Now, I know he averages four assists, but let's just be honest here, that boy is not a passer. And like CJ, he don't play no damn defense either. In fact, most of these shooting guards don't play no damn defense. But even though Zach Levine being your best player won't guarantee you a playoff spot, in fact, you probably won't make it at all, he can very much handle the defensive attention of being that number one guy on the team. Honestly, outside of being one spot higher or lower, nobody's going to be triggered by this except for Chicago Bulls fans. Which, to those Chicago Bulls fans, let me tell you something right now. Please shut the fuck up. You don't know what you're talking about. You're watching with your heart. And I'm not going to credit him for being 25. He's 25. He's only going to get better. Nigga, that ain't got shit to do with the day, bro. Tighten up. But yeah, Zach Levine's a hell of a player. He can pretty much fit in every system outside of one that requires him to play defense. And even though he's basically a 26 point per game scorer, trust me, I didn't know how stacked the shooting guard position was until I really wrote it down. Oh yeah, and side note, anybody who used to be a bounce bro with Andrew Wiggins, yeah, you gotta get penalized for that. But coming in at number eight, we have Jalen Brown, the first player who can actually play some goddamn defense. Now, admittingly, Jalen Brown is gonna be the worst scorer on this list. However, the gap is not as big as people think it is. I don't know where the hell it came from, but this dude one day woke up and was like, yeah, I'm gonna shoot eight threes a game now, and he started making them shits. Which I actually find really commendable because even though Brad Stevens is a hell of a coach, sometimes them motherfuckers just come down the court and jack a three. But despite the terrible shot selection that's borderline crazy, on eating levels. Jalen Brown just started making that shit. Like, he just started pulling up from the right wing and chucking that shit with 21 seconds left in the shot clock. And to be honest, I'm stumped. I don't know. That shit just started falling. But it definitely benefited his game for obvious reasons. In terms of athleticism alone, he's at worst the third best player on the list, which often leads him to shooting open corner threes because you're either going to play off of him and let him shoot or you're going to let him dunk on you. And even though, like I said in the beginning, he's probably the worst offensive player on this list. And in fact, he's by far the worst playmaker altogether. But defensively, I mean, come on now. He's at worst the third best defender on the list. And it's not close. I'm all for slandering the two-way player debate, but at the end of the day, that shit does matter, and my God, it's not close. I have to give him credit for that. And one of the guards who actually play better defense than him is gonna be number seven, who is Paul George. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. Oh, you're just being a casual. And I'm not being toxic either. Trust me, I know how good Paul George is supposed to be. In fact, if it wasn't for Mr. Playoff P being one of the worst playoff performers of all time, he'd be undoubtedly a top five shooting guard at worst number four, to be honest with you. But it's not the fact that I can't ignore it. It's the fact I simply refuse to ignore how bad he is in the playoffs. Hell, the fact that CJ McCollum typically shows up in the playoffs, and even this year, he always hit the shot that fucking mattered. Bro would be decking it for the whole first half, and then the second half give me five straight minis or some dumb shit. And as far as Jalen Brown goes, yes, he had a meltdown in, I believe, 2018, but this season in the playoffs, he looked like the best Celtic on the team. Both of those guys, and in fact, every player on this list, I believe, would elevate their status in the playoffs. And when you compare that to playoff P, I mean, come on, it's self-explanatory. You literally should playoff P. That nigga's a bum. He hits the side of the backboard. He sells out his teammates 
face. I mean, he's only good for an edge up in humor. And when I say humor, I'm talking about a nigga like me who laughs at him missing shots. Being said, that nigga shape up be dropping 81. I ain't gonna cap. That motherfucker be crisp. But listen here, Paul. I'm not sleeping on you. I know how good you are. For the love of God, you are an MVP candidate. There's only two other players that can say that. And technically, you were a DPOY candidate, but I'm not gonna lie. I always thought your defense was overrated. But until he steps up in the playoffs, I refuse to put him any higher. I'm just not gonna do it. Actually, I don't even want him to step up. Can you be the same nigga that he was in the regular season? My God. Probably not with his bum ass. Now, this one hurts my feelings the most. Coming in at number six, we have Klay Thompson. I'm not on fucking drugs, bro. Klay Thompson would easily be third, if not fourth on this list. But it's about to be two years now, and even though I think his game's gonna translate fine because he's not an athletic player, this is at best where I could put him. Now, Klay Thompson is grossly underrated, but you will find that one guy who thinks he's better than James Harden or some shit. But that nigga's a crayon eater. We all know how good Klay is. He's easily top three, no question. Everybody has all these different players are, oh, he's so dangerous when he gets hot. This nigga, Klay Thompson, is one of the best players of all time when this motherfucker's hot, dog. He doesn't need to dribble the ball more than 12 times to drop 61 points on you. It's not much I gotta say about that, dog. Like, what the fuck? And I know a lot of y'all gonna put Paul George above him, but I'm not gonna do it. But yeah, the nigga won't be playing basketball for two straight years. I can't put him any higher than this. My dog hurt, bro. Prayers out for him and his family. Now, these next three niggas are gonna be the second biggest debate in the comment section. But a nigga like me ain't never give a fuck. Number five is gonna be Bradley Beal. Now, this real deal Beal bullshit, hey, that ain't cool, bro. Stop doing that shit. But Bradley Beal a cool ass nigga. I hate to put him at number five, but it's just true. Now, his game assist ended tremendously. He's obviously a 30 point per game scorer. But, and I'm trying my best not to call him an empty stat player because he's really not an empty stat player, but the dude is just a bucket. I know he averaged six assists, and I don't think he's a terrible playmaker, but he was fifth in usage rating. Like, he had the ball pretty much every time he was on the court. And again, like most of this list, defense, come on, bro. He's certainly a willing defender, but I mean, it don't mean nothing if you're not good at it. He's just a bucket, and it doesn't quite translate the wins. Now, I know his team sucks, but I actually had an internship not too long ago, and I had a daunting task of watching a lot of Wizards games. And most of those games were pretty much Bradley Beal doing stuff as the team loses by 20 points. Like with Bradley Beal, he's not going to necessarily have your team play better. He's not going to have your team adapt to a situation and come back. That's one thing where he could grow as a player. Another thing is funny enough, he's a really strong finisher, but he finishes weak as fuck sometimes. And I would talk about shot selection, but again, he is on the Wizards, so what the hell are you going to do? But yeah, Bradley Beal's whole bucket, he's a stud, and it's easily arguable that he could be number four or number three on this list. But I got to see those strides as a leader. I got to see some of these games turn to wins, which I can finally say for number four on the list, and that's Devin Booker. I ain't going to lie, calling Devin Booker a loser in a group chat every day is something I miss. It was a really fun joke. It was a hell of a good player that just always lost. Now, I'm still relatively new to YouTube, so it's not like I can necessarily prove this point, but I've always thought Devin Booker had underrated help. Granted, the coaching wasn't necessarily the best, but when you look at those rosters top to bottom, I'm not going to hold you. People was bugging like a motherfucker. Those rosters were not bad. They weren't super teams or anything, but my God, they weren't bottom of the West type shit. The issue was Devin Booker had a really immature game. Devin Booker often scored at random points in the middle of the ball game. You look up and you're like, oh shit, he has 30. Lost by 20 though. But now he's a much better playmaker and it's like, holy shit, he knows what a mid range is. Even his pace of play, he plays the game smarter overall. And as a result, you look at this horrid team that even I said shouldn't belong in the bubble, sweeping everyone they play in the goddamn bubble. I wonder what changed. Honestly, I thought I'd be slandering D-Book, but I'm really just proud of him. Unfortunately, you still not better than my dog D-Mitch coming in at number three. Now, I wasn't on YouTube at the time, but everybody that knows me in person, I tried to tell you. I told niggas for two years, to be honest, but especially last season, Donovan Mitchell was better than this nigga Devin Booker. I tried to say it. I tried. Ain't wanna listen. Now, hopefully, the shit's obvious, but in case it's not, let me talk about who Donovan Mitchell is. The Utah Jazz literally lose Gordon Hayward for absolutely nothing. Just let him walk. And the team barely misses a step. In fact, the only reason this is really even a debate between D. Mitch and D. Book, let alone D. Mitch and Bradley Beal, is because even though he has more success in terms of winning, it's only marginal. Yes, Devin Booker hasn't been on the best rosters. Bradley Beal hasn't either. But here's what's gonna absolutely blow your mind right here. Neither is Donovan Mitchell. See, the Utah Jazz think Donovan Mitchell's just gonna drop a hundred or some shit. Like, Donovan Mitchell is the only offensive, competent person on the roster. And the Jazz have a bunch of names that sound good, but they don't really fit together in the way that the Jazz made them fit together. A lot of people are gonna bring up Rudy Gobert, but I ask you why. His value goes down day by day by day. And even what he's good at, which is really just defense, he's mad overrated. I know a guard center matchup is always a mismatch, fair enough, but he's so bad in isolation. I mean, guards literally look for him on defense. Mike Conley was that annual guy. It happens every offseason. A very good defensive team signs a very good defensive player and it's, oh shit, now they're gonna win the title. Now they're alive. Yeah, Mike Conley's damaged goods, bro. We all knew that, but y'all didn't want to admit it. And everybody else on the team fits this description. They can catch, they can kind of shoot, if at 
at all. And they can play some pretty good defense. Like, what? No, you can't design a team like that. What the fuck is wrong with y'all? So, yeah, Donovan Mitchell's not in the best situation either, but you know what he does with his situation? This nigga went to the playoffs and averaged 36 and a half points, five assists, five rebounds on 51 shooting from three and 53% from the field. No, I don't have Devin Booker or Bradley Beal doing that. Oh, but see, G blew a 3 1. You ain't, you ain't believe that, bro. Shut the fuck up. You ain't, you ain't believe what you're saying, bro. Just shut up. If that nigga didn't have a light skinned shadow clone version of himself on the Nuggets, he would have beat them niggas in five games. I'm not penalizing him for the fact that he couldn't outscore that and Jokic. I'm not doing it. But that's just the D match Bradley Beal Donovan Mitchell debate. That debate's gonna last forever, right? The next two niggas are substantially better than everybody else on this list. Y'all already know who the two niggas are, so let me go ahead and tell you who I think is better. Coming in at number two, y'all already know I love this nigga to death. Number two is Luka Doncic. I'm not gonna give him a boost for being young, bro. I gotta count him for what he is today. And funny enough, what he is today is still debatable to be number one. I'm not even sicing, bro, when I say this. In terms of offense, Luka Doncic can pretty much do everything on the fucking court. One of the best shot creators in the game, one of the best playmakers in the game. He can finish around the rim, and he's a much better shooter than the averages would say. He's even an MVP candidate for this season. And in terms of playoff performance, I mean, my God, people think if KP was healthy, they would have beat the Clippers, which isn't a crazy take at all. There's a bunch of evidence pointing towards that. It's my man, Wuka, bro. Like, I hate that I gotta put him at number two, but I can't cap. Number one is James Harden, unless you're fanboying, it's really not that close. And when I say that close, I'm not referring to a talent gap. But what I am referring to is the fact that James Harden and Luka Doncic play the same, but James Harden's just a lot better at it. Luka, I'm so sorry I gotta do you like this, bro. Finishing at the rim, James Harden. Shooting the ball, James Harden. Playmaking, if you wanna say Luka, fine, but it's really James Harden. Isolation game in general, James Harden. I mean, dude, James Harden is literally a better version of Luka Doncic outside of marginal passing ability. And James Harden's an underrated defender. Like, James Harden's just better than this nigga. And Harden gets a lot of shit for being a playoff choker, but let's just be honest here. Even though I personally believe the Warriors find a way to win regardless, if Chris Paul doesn't go down and the Rockets actually beat the Warriors, it's a 99.9% .9 chance the Rockets win the entire finals. Which, at that point, we're not even having this conversation James Harden's a champion. I'm not a man hypotheticals and no cap, James Harden do be fucking up in the playoffs. But I only brought that up to point out that he's not that bad in the playoffs. Like, he's not playoff P. Being said, the fact that this is even a debate is on James Harden himself. Like, it's kind of asinine that one of the greatest scorers of all time can't score in the playoffs. And fair enough, if Luka keeps ascending, he could easily pass James Harden. But that's a hell of a reach. He ain't there yet, and we all know it. James Harden is still quite clearly your best shooting guard in the NBA, but now let's talk about some honorable mentions. Drew Holiday is most definitely that guy that you ask everybody, who's the most underrated player in the league today? And everyone says his name. Fun fact, he's not underrated then, dumbass. But it's a really good argument you could swap him with CJ McCollum. After all, Drew Holiday is just a straight-up better all-around player. But to be blunt with you guys, because this video's getting too long anyway, I think CJ is quite literally that much better of a score. I'm gonna say this one time and one time only that nigga Victor Oladipo, he ain't it no more. It's fun to root for the guy, but come on now, the shit's obvious. Tyler Hero, my dog, but he's quite literally a worse version of CJ. Buddy Heal shoots better than everybody but Clay Thompson, but that's quite literally it, and considering the fact that all the guards on this list can shoot, if not shoot at an elite level, yeah, Buddy with the woo. And if you're looking for a nigga like Evan Fournier or Karis LeVert, bruh, stop it. Now, if you see a player who's not on the list who's hilariously better than Jalen Brown, Zach Levine, or even CJ McCollum, it's a good chance he's in the small forward video. Do you understand? A nigga like Jimmy Butler gonna be small forward video. Nigga like LeBron James gonna be small forward video. Okay? Okay. Dumb bitch. But that's gonna do it for today's video. It's me, boy, TSO Sage. Now, it could've been more informative this video, but really, to be honest, it's 1.45 in the morning. You don't need to use basketball reference in a textbook to define your debate anyway. And plus, my source is me, my nigga. Like, dude, trust me. And lastly, if this is your first video watching my content, I feel so bad for you, bro. Unless you like this shit, which in that case, if you like the video, like the video. If you like my content, subscribe. Why the fuck are you watching my shit and you're not subscribed? It's Beanboy TSO Sage. I'm gonna holla at y'all later. Take care and stay blessed.